Dear ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are all healthy and well uh, in this still challenging and extraordinary time affected by COVID-19. I'm Katarzyna Kubas, the ITTF Continental Development Manager, and I'm very happy and proud uh, to kindly welcome you on our sixth ITTF High Performance and Development Webinar with the topic of gender equality in table tennis. At first, I would like to inform you about our webinar call. Please uh, mute yourself and turn off the video. Uh, all panelists will be on. Uh, please uh, do not touch anything related to the recording and our presentation slides. And you are welcome to leave your questions for our panelists uh, in the chat and we will do our best to answer as many as possible in the question and answer uh, part of the webinar. And thank you in advance uh, for following this call. Uh, moving forward, I have a great pleasure to introduce uh, to our today's panelists, fantastic women who contribute greatly to our below sport. I would like to introduce ha Hajira Kaye from South Africa, ITTF Gender Commissioner, African Table Tennis Federation Vice President. Hello. Hi. Uh, 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 good afternoon, Katazina. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be on this program. Thank you. And um, our second panelist um, is Eva Yeller from Germany. Uh, German national coach cadet and former German technical director. Hello, Eva. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you. And um, next is Galia Dvorak from Spain. It's our Olympian, ITTF Athletes Commission member, ETU Executive Board member. Hi, Galia. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we have Elaine Lim Elian from Malaysia, Blue Batch Empire, Youth Olympic Games Empire, and now I can say she is also nominated to be Empire in Tokyo Olympic Games. Elaine, hello. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Um, so I will take uh, this opportunity for a few additional words. Uh, towards uh, our today's topic. Um, it's well known that sport is one of the most uh, powerful platforms uh, for promotion uh, of gender balance and strengthening the position of uh, female uh, and girls uh, from players to leaders. Uh, it's a fact uh, that there have been made a great progress over the last years. Uh, but there are still some challenges to be addressed, uh, which we will touch uh, during uh, today's webinar. Uh, but also we'll talk about some possible benefits um, and solutions. Uh, listening to our panelists' experience of how to be a female um, expert in their field, uh, it will be invaluable. Um, and it's also worth to highlight that uh, we have uh, we had a great uh, interest of also our male audience in this webinar. Uh, therefore, it's important to mention that um, not only a female work towards the gender equality, but male as well together with. Um, and also, uh, for instance, uh, taking into example from other side um, the last your webinars that we have. Um, unfortunately, there was only uh, less than 30% uh, of female participation. And there is also a question that can be raised uh, if women are really grabbing the opportunities that are offered. So everything, I guess, would be uh, uh, during the, our conversation, during the, our webinar. And I hope you will enjoy our today's webinar. Last but not least, I'm warmly welcome 
our ITF High Performance and Development Operations Manager, Dora Yeller, and I would like to pass uh, to Dora. Thank you. Thank you, Katarzyna. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, before, hello. Hi. <laughs> before we dive into our discussion, um, I'd just like to show you some stats that may or may not speak for themselves. Um, let's start by looking at numbers on what I would call the administration and management side of our sport. Um, as you can see, it's a field that's quite markedly predominantly male still. Um, you, don't, you don't really have to look at the numbers at all. You can just see blue is male, orange is female. So that's, that's quite marked um, on this one. Um, it's really quite obvious. Uh, if, we, if we look at our athletes, that's looking a little bit better. As you can see, it's already quite balanced. Um, there's some measure of improvement still possible, but it's, it's clearly going the right way. Um, then we can look at our coaches. As you can see, again, blue is predominant. Um, it's not it's not really looking that great for gender equality, and um, we may hear more on the reasons for that and also possible solutions later on in our discussion. Um, that's really something that we can keep an eye on. Um, and if we go and look at our last group of umpires and referees, one really positive thing is that if you look at uh, umpires that will be participating uh, at the next Olympic Games in Tokyo, you can see that there are more women than men. Um, so, but if we look at other events and other areas, uh, men are still, I don't want to say dominating, but uh, it's, it's still not, not quite there. Um, so the, the picture on umpires and referees is a bit more varied than for the other uh, areas. Um, however, now before we go over to our discussion, I want to leave on a, on a bit more positive note. Um, it's worth noting that in, in our last year, we had one of the highest ever participations of women in our developmental programs across the continents. Uh, so we are working towards changing these stats for the better towards a more gender balanced picture. Um, all right, so I think we can we can start with our panel discussion now, uh, but keep keep these numbers in mind and also the picture that they portray. Um, I would like to address all our panelists now. These are questions for all of you, but maybe Galia, you can be the first one to answer this one. Um, in your opinion, what is the main reason? for gender inequality in table tennis at the moment? What is the biggest problem that you can see? If I have to choose one and say which is the main reason, I, I would say that it's uh, it's the same, that, the same reason why we see gender inequality everywhere else. It's been decades where women, they just stayed at home taking care of children. And uh, despite this tendency slowly changing and in most parts of the world, women are already allowed to do sports and take part in basically anything they want. It's still all this background of years and years where women, they just didn't take part in things. So um, also I know there is some countries where women who do sports are not taken seriously. Uh, also in many places like women, they, uh, men, they already have the power and the men who are in top, they are not letting women to take part in any area so i would say yeah if i have to choose like one which is the biggest problem i would say it's the past the past is a problem thank you um so same question for you hajira in your opinion what what is in your opinion the main reason for inequality still existing well can i maybe start with the positives of what's been achieved if you wish. In, in the, yeah. Uh, we, we have equal prize money since 2005. Uh, women and girls have equal 
participation at competition and I believe at training level and in programs. Uh, a bias-free representation of media because it's one area we're not focusing on, women in the media space. Uh, we have the Young Empires project, however, it doesn't reflect in the stats that you put up earlier in terms of match officials, but it's an equal opportunity for the Youth Olympics. We, we also have equal opportunities in mentorship programs of the ITT. So I want to start with the positives about the inequality, but what, what we need to address and the biggest inequality is women in leadership at all levels. It's uh, pleasing to see that in terms of the staff component that we have women in di a director level and that which is very good. But the rest of it, it needs to be addressed. Um, we also need to look at equal economic support for women and girls programs and education. It's, it's an inequality we need to address. Yes, there is equal price money, but also we must develop an opportunity for table tennis entrepreneurs, be it equipment, be it clothing, whatever. Um, and then we need to also, we don't talk about this, but respond to, uh, respond to gender-based violence. Is it happening in table tennis? Is that an inequality? We don't know, we haven't looked at it whether it's physical or verbal. So coming back to the question that I needed to, to focus on the positives and what needs, what we need to do to address um, equality in, in table tennis, gender equality. One is a, the patriarchal system that we live with, women's confidence in themselves to say, yes, I can do it. I, I, I am up to the challenge. Um, and I think that is one of the uh, uh, challenges we women face. The other is also that as women, we also mm -hmm. don't give you and recognize what a woman does in terms of promoting gender equality. I'm sure the others will have some, the other panelists can uh, feed into that. But I needed to, Dora, to start with the positives of what we have achieved in the IATTA and what are the challenges that we need to address as an organization and as the table tennis family and society and the hindrances for us to achieve that. Okay, thank you very much, Ajira. Um, so, Elaine. Thank you. Um, so, in my opinion, the biggest problems of um, table tennis for not being better gender balance is due to the lack of support um, structures mainly for the sports women and girls with big potential in table tennis, those young girls in a big, with big potential. And I think that could be due to limited coverage of media on the women in sports, particularly on the athletes, match or speaker, and the coaches. Secondly, I think that could be due to as well um, limited funding for the development of women in sports um, that would actually slow down the progress of the development of women, particularly in table tennis. And the match officer point of view, because I'm an umpire, so I would think that the main problem of the gender imbalance is due to the imbalanced number of the female course instructor. I would think that um, there are more men um, as a course instructor that would actually uh, less role models for female umpires and referees. So that would lead to the imbalance, gender imbalance, um, particularly in table tennis. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And Eva, what is your opinion? As a matter of fact, I think it was almost all said already. Uh, these are the main 
main factors why we have no better picture. But as I'm coach and I have very close contact with the players, I will talk about coaches and about the players. Uh, it is for sure a fact that the women players, women athletes, don't have the same financial support than the male athletes. And especially with young girls, I see many times they, stay, they cannot go the pathway of professionalism because it is simply not possible. It is not possible to obtain the uh, education, but it is also not, I mean, table tennis education, but it is also not, there is no future. I cannot talk to the, to the parents and say, yes, please let your girl go table tennis pathway. And know that she will always earn, I mean, it is not on international level, I talk about the clubs level, she will earn less than a half of what men earn. So how can I, I can, I can very easily say to a, to a boy, parents, boys' parents, please let him, he is talented and he wants and let him try, no problem. Yeah, he can support himself, he can, he can also support the family sometimes with his uh, earnings, but no women player, I, I mean, out of some Asia countries. Yeah, I, the, I, I think it is like this. This is the first thing. And the second thing, it is a little bit also the uh, education. This is in the, especially in the level of the coaches. The women don't get the same opportunity because usually if there is a candidate, a male and a female candidate for a, let's say, start coach position, because in our, uh, in our uh, work, we learn, him by do we, we learn a lot by doing. It is not that much out of the books. It is, but it is not that much. So you have to get the opportunity to, to start to work, to, to be with the players, to go with them. And this is not, if, if, they, if there is a choice between a male or a female uh, coach, usually they take a male coach. And why? Because not, because many times it is the people believe that the female coach at the end will decide for the family and it will not decide for the real professionalism in table tennis coaching. But this is, this is again one, it, it's like a circle, you know. If you cannot support the family, if you cannot earn as much as your husband does or your, your partner does, then you are the one who will stay at home and will take care of the kids and will be, will be the one who will uh, not work in table tennis or anywhere else. It is not so different as it is in other uh, professionals, professional, what is it? Yeah, professional working places. Thank you very much. Kesha. Uh, so I, I'm gonna have the second question also to all the panelists. Um, I would like to start uh, with the Hajira. Um, oh. As a female in your respective roles, have you found more obstacles or opportunities on your way to the current position? Um, yeah. As a, as a female leader uh, and in the position of leadership, uh, there has been many obstacles, but there's also been opportunities. Most, if not all women face the obstacle of being in a patriarchal environment. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, and we face it daily, no matter how confident you are. I have faced many challenges as a female leader. Uh, I'm not tolerated, not being listened to, and being 
And being in the minority, uh, female in leadership, one finds that the upper echelons of in that position or that organization or that hierarchy is very, very tough. But I overcame this. This is the positive uh, by being vigilant, letting my voice be heard without raising it and becoming a bully. Um, consistent in my work that I do with lots of pride and passion, provide solutions to uh, provide uh, solutions when there are challenges, and make positive change uh, for women in sport, not only at uh, the position I'm in at uh, ITTF, but also locally, nationally, continentally. And those were the opportunities, but uh, it's, it, is, it is a challenge, but at the same time, you need to believe in yourself. I would like to address the same question to uh, Elaine. Thank you. So, well, I would say that, um, yeah, during the initial stage of my umpiring journey, I faced some challenges and uh, obstacles mainly because of two reasons, being young and female. I started umpiring when I was only 15 years old, so that was wow. about 16 years ago. So those days, you would see that most umpires are men um, at their 40s and above, and you don't see many young female umpiring officiating at the tournament. So I wouldn't be surprised if people are doubtful about my performance, about my capability as a match officer, um, especially with the presence of the cameras, live streamings, um, umpire we work um, in front of the screen. So there are certain degree of stress. Well, um, I would say that I think life is about turning the obstacles into opportunities. If I can't change the fact being a young female umpire, so I have to change my own mindset, right? So I have to react in a different way. So for example, what I can do is to perform consistent and uh, excellent at a, over a long period of time. And that is when the doubtfulness of my capability would tend to reduce and eliminate it and that's how I possible to transform the obstructor into opportunities. Um, and also it's very important, I would like to highlight that um, I would like to thank my association, the Table Tennis Association of Malaysia, because of the opportunities, trust and also um, support given by the association Although I has been very young, um, female, and they still support me in many ways. So thank you, TTAM. <laughs> yeah. Support is precious. Um, I would like to uh, now ask Galia about this. Well, actually, despite my my path has been very different from from my colleagues, like uh, I can relate very much to everything that's been said till now because uh, especially at the beginning of my career I, I found a lot of obstacles and challenges and that's a very strange thing to say because I'm coming from a family of table tennis players but my parents when they taught me to, to play table tennis and when they started to coach me they would never imagine that I could become a professional of the sport because they knew that the chances for a woman especially in Spain to be a professional and, and to make a living out of table tennis, it was something really, really difficult. So when, when I started to play, I, I find myself always as a part of a minority. And also uh, it, it was very difficult to, to find support, to find recognition, to find funding for the tournaments. Uh, when, I, when I was playing at that time and when I was young, I was used that guys, they, the boys, they would go maybe to four, five, six tournaments per year. And as the girls who would go maybe to one or two, despite our results, were better. So, of course, there were many, many more challenges. But somehow, also, I turned them into opportunities because, as I was saying, I'm coming 
I'm from a country that has not so much tradition from ta of table tennis. So reaching the top and being the maybe one, the best or one of the best of female table tennis players in my country was kind of easy because there was not that many girls playing. So once I reached the top, if we can call it like this, I, I realized that it was maybe the time to 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 use uh, the power and the influence that I had, the recognition that I earned to try to reverse and change the situation, to, to try to maybe uh, talk to coaches, to federations, to, to, to try to change this tendency. And actually, that's how I started to become an athlete representative. And one, I'm gladly surprised that since I'm a member of the EB board in the European Union and since I'm in athletes commission, I, like I was very afraid that because of being a woman and being young, people would not be listening to me. But uh, the truth is that uh, the people that I found in the in the, these power positions, they were really ready to to. So at least hear me out and let me say the, the things that I had in mind. One, another thing is that they, at the end they listen and they would do what I'm suggesting them to do. But uh, I, I was gladly surprised to see that people in power, the, the, they are willing to change, at least. Thank you, Gaia. Um, and um, Eva? Can you just share you, uh, because not only a female coach, but also female leader as well, if you can uh, answer for this question. Thank you. Uh, I, I was lucky at the beginning of my career, I was working with in, in an, an environment uh, which was dominated totally by men, totally by men, but uh, I have a theory. Oh, this is based on my experience. The, the way the men behave to women is okay. Cultural, uh, but it is also a lot about sovereignty, about the self-confidence of the men. So the men I worked with them with, with were simply uh, result oriented they they the, the only thing was important that the work was done and the, that the work was done well and if there were good results everything was okay it was not important uh, how did i look or how old i was or that i was female uh, as our results became better many people started to get interested in in our work and also a little bit jealous and then it was very easy to to put all obstacles because I was woman and I had many but I have to say it is it was for me easy because I, I it, it was easy to we had results, so it was easy to show that it is not important if somebody is male or female. But the, the, I, I, I got many personal, many simply personal obstacles and personal... Everything that was negative became personal. It was not because it was easy. I say it is easy. You discuss with me table tennis, we discuss table tennis. So I, I was working hard and the players played well, so this was not the problem. But the, the, on the personal level, sometimes it was very hard. And this one can, I think, only, only solve by, yeah, by fighting it. Sometimes I tried to ignore every, all the negative things, but sometimes you just simply have to go and you say, come on, we have to clear this. You may not be afraid, you, you have to be self-confident and you have to say, this I can do. So that was it. I, it makes me sad. My Table Tennis Association, German Table Tennis Association, was one of the first i mean it was the first one to put a woman into the leading position and we also had 
many female coaches on the top positions. And I think we were one of the leading in this um, part. But uh, it is changing a little bit into the negative. And this makes me at the end of my career very sad. That's all. Thank you very much for oh. this experience. And of course, was. Um, OK, uh, we will move now to the uh, specific questions. So that would be individual to each of you. Um, and I would like to address the first question uh, to Hajira. Uh, as a opening also of the topic, uh, what does gender equality in table tennis mean to you? Like shortly. Um, yeah, OK. Equal respect, equal rights and opportunities to decision making. Financial equity, that's where Eva also comes in. Uh, breaking down the unconscious bias because there is bias against women. And I'll be quick, gender equality is not a campaign or a hashtag. Like we say, oh, we need gender equality, it's not that. It is something we all owe to ourselves and future generations to organize with no matter how challenging it is that we, 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 we need to do this and, 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 and get to a stage or existing level of wokeness. You know what that is, wokeness. Um, it will always be a challenge if we don't demand our equal rights and opportunities. So for me, that's what uh, gender equality is, that we need to be respected, but we need to demand that respect as well. However, I still believe that it is slow to, to achieve total gender equality. We probably won't achieve it, but we need to try it. And Ava, to you, for me, I just feel for you that uh, you feel the way you feel, but I hope we're not going to, the table tennis family will not lose you with your wisdom and <laughs> your advice. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dora. Thank you. Um, so my next question is to Galia. Uh, you've mentioned your involvement in the ETTU Executive Board and in the Athletes Commission. And I know you've worked extensively on gender equality and you've prepared a great presentation and I wish we could share it all because it's excellent. Um, but we will share part of it and maybe you could talk us through it a little bit. Um, so about the current status and about the possible benefits of gender equality to everyone. Well, yeah. So uh, during last year in 2019, I took part uh, in a program from the organized by the International Olympic Committee and also with support from uh, the European Olympic Committee. And it was about leadership and gender equality. And one of the things that uh, that I, I took from this experience, it was that uh, first of all, to, to see where you, where you should, do you want to go, you should know where are you coming from. So then I, I came to, to a maybe meeting in ETTO and I said, um, do we have some stats about what's the situation in Europe? And actually we didn't. So with the, with the help of the Deputy Secretary General, uh, we, we made a study in, uh, in Europe asking to all, all the associations about the, the status. So how, how many women were involved in the different er areas of table tennis? And uh, for me, it was surprising to see that in the elite is where we see the biggest equality because we are so used to, to, uh, to hear like the, the top athletes to complaining like uh, how, how the, the imbalance in, the, in how much they get paid. But if we, if we looked at the numbers in participation in the, in the ITTF circuit and in the European tournaments, we could see that it's, it was like the, 
the, the events where we could see bigger or more ballots. But if we looked at the general numbers and the general figures, and we would look how many women play table tennis in Europe, as you see in this uh, slide, it's three times less women players. If we looked at the coaches, same numbers, three times less. If we looked at the umpires, at the registered umpires, five times less. And where, and where we would see the biggest gap, it's in the, in the, in the power positions, in the associations in Europe, it's seven times less female pre presidents. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think in all Europe, maybe we have only five national association president, not pre female presidents. So of course, if women are underrepresented in every area of our sport, in the elite, we would see less sponsorship. Uh, the women, of course, we are underrepresented in, in media. We get worse contracts in the clubs and also uh, with our material suppliers, and and they, they pay us less. It's it's as simple as that. So maybe if we can move to the next slide, uh, we, I I would talk about the about the benefits of of the gender equality because it's obvious that the, in gender equality is uh, very positive for women because it's very uh, empowering. For women, but it's also it's also positive for everyone else. Uh, should I change the slide, or or somebody can do that for me? Mm, we can change it for you, like this. Uh, do you want? Yeah. Uh, I don't know because I I think I have some problem with my computer and I don't really see what's in front. We are <laughs> now looking I, at the it's fine. See. Sorry. And before that, we were looking at benefits for the organization. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, uh, like the, the benefits for, like, uh, as I was saying, it's obvious that uh, if we reach gender equality, it will be very positive for women. But the thing is, like, it's not only positive for women, it's positive for all. And this is not me saying it. Uh, I mean, all these slides and this, and this uh, how to say, this, this um headlines they are based in information from the European Council and also from International Olympic Committee and the UN. So if we look at what what are the, the main benefits for an organization if we reach gender equality, it's of course the economic growth because women represent the fifty percent of population. So if we involve more women in our organization, if in this case uh, a club or an association or a National Olympic Committee, then it means that uh, we have a biggest, um, uh, the, our target group reach increases by a 50%. Then of course it gives a very positive image, uh, a very modern image because uh, maybe like this is one of the weakest uh, uh, points, but at the same time uh, for for organizations, it's, it's a very important one. What, what people think of, about them, and then again, this will translate into into positive media. Uh, then, of course, uh, better performance inside inside the the organization because if there is diversity, there is uh, different opinions, and uh, in an increase in human resources. As I was saying, like if if we reach if we inc increase the amount of people who who participate by, by the 50%, the, the opportunities grow. And uh, at the same time, there is huge benefits for, for the society. Uh, gender, uh, gender equality is, is very positive because uh, uh, men and women are different. Uh, we don't know how, how different we are, if it's uh, because of uh, our DNA or just because how we are raised, but we know that diversity is is always positive. Thank you very much, Gaia. It's really great work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next question is to Elaine, um, and you've addressed this a little bit in, in your first answer. Um, but what do you think could be another solution to increase the number of female umpires in table tennis? I know you mentioned role models, missing role models. But maybe another element of this. So thank you for the question. In order to um, increase the number of the female officers, I would think that um, we should look into two aspects of it. 
first is to retain the existing number of the match officers, and the second would be increase the number of the new umpires, new officials. So um, for the first part, retaining the female match officer, the existing one, um, before we look into the solutions, I think it's important for us to identify what is the problem? Why is it we can't retain the existing female officers? Um, many times I see the situation is that the women after married, having the children, they tend to switch their priority from table tennis to family, especially at the um, highest level, the grade A um, category of the umpire, whereby we have to go to tournament regularly to maintain our status as a blue badge umpires. So that is the main problem. So I would say that communication is really important. So um, the umpire should actually speak to their partner, get their support. So I think um, it's possible because I have umpire friends, both husband and wife are blue badge umpires. So they have three children. So what they do is that they take turn to go to the tournament and um, for the evaluation and to maintain the blue badge status. So in order to retain the existing number of the umpires, I think it's very important for us to emphasize on the balancing between table tennis and family. So we have to encourage our female umpires, even after get married and then having their babies, they still will come back and it's like a group of table tennis families. We are together and we continue to serve even though we are sing either we are single or we are get married or with children. So I think that it's really important, right? That it would be the, my first point. The second point, how to increase the um, new um, female umpires or match officers. I would start with um, globally. I would think that the respective table tennis association should increase the awareness of um, having the including the table tennis as a co-curriculum activities in school. For instance, um, in, in this way, we can actually encourage the young talent. We start to identify the young talents in the school level during the teenage time. So any young girls with big potential in table tennis or umpiring, for example, would be encouraged to take the um, training and also subsequently examination exam um, to become umpire at the local level. That is how I started with. I started umpiring when I was 15 years old, whereby my school teacher actually dominated me to sit for the um, exam, the state umpire exam when I was 18, uh, sorry, when I was 15. And slowly um, along the way, I become the um, national umpire, international umpire, and then became the international, uh, blue badge international umpire at young age. So at the school time, it's really important. So if all the, um, association, different um, table tennis association from different country would encourage and create the awareness of table tennis since young, then that would be a big potential that we will be able to encourage more female match officer. And the third point that uh, I mentioned just now during the introduction, personally, I would think that um, we should encourage more, we should train more female course instructors. Um, during the umpire or library courses because we think we are quite lacking of it. But I would say that um, they are very important because they could serve as a role models that could encourage us, um, the young umpires, especially the young female umpires, um, to increase our self-confidence to, to be in this um, sport. So we feel like um, we have a sisterly figure to actually guide us along the way. But I must say that we are very lucky that we have some very good female uh, left free or match officers. And at the moment, like Isabel from Belgium, um, Rebecca from Sweden, um, Silvia from Costa Rica, and also Rachel Ramos from um, Philippines. I have known them for so long and um, I have learned a lot from those female role models. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
And so now um, it's my turn. I have a question uh, to Eva. Um, we've seen um, the stats that Dora showed us before uh, that um, female coaches uh, participation in the top level events is, is really low. And I'd like to ask you, um, what do you think is the main reason of that, that um, when the level increase, uh, the number of female uh, coaches actually decrease? And uh, is there a way to change this trend? Hey, um, no, it is, I, I think it is simply the, the way how the life goes. Uh, to be a coach, to be a good coach on high level coach, you this is not a job of four for eight hours, not for ten. You have to live for it. You you simply live this. This this is your life. This is your passion. This is your your mind. Everything is being a coach. So you need a partner, and you need a family who understands this and also supports this. And this is a big a big big luck to have something like this. I had, I, I just can talk about about myself, not about the others. So I had my parents who always helped me. Um, my husband had no problems. He, he knew I wanted to do this, so he supported me. And uh, that's why I was able to, to go to go into the let's say higher levels. I don't like this uh, this uh, expression because for me it is not hierarchical. For me, working with the cadets is not under working or less worse than working with the seniors. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but I could go. I could put a lot of time, a lot of heart, a lot of mind into my work. So. It's, not everybody has this luck, not every woman. And then again, what I said in the first topic, in the first answer, if the woman gets less paid, then there is no question who will stay at home, who will be the one who will, uh, I, less paid as a man, yeah? If there's no question, the, the one who supports the family, who, who can feed the family, will work. And the woman will stay at home or will do a job which is less uh, time involving. I think this is the only, <clears throat> or this is the main, the main reason why we have less coaches on the high level. Yeah. Thank I you. Think Thank you. Um, Dalia, another question for you. Um, as a member of actually two athletes commissions, uh, you know how important career transition is for an athlete. Um, and also generally for, for, you know, women in the sports industry, um, which is still predominantly male, as we've seen. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? What what are your recommendations or? Well, um, my thoughts on this is that hopefully, if we do nothing, in many many years, still we would achieve this equality, because so women we are slowly learning and slowly getting ready to take what belongs to us. But uh, I am in the side that I don't want to wait this years and I think that there is many things that we can do to to push the this this women to to get closer to leadership positions to to get involved in their associations to to continue to having a career transition also involved in table tennis and so I'm talking I'm about, talking about uh, so different, different policies, different policies uh, uh, support scholarships scholarship. Uh, do you hear me well? Because I, I hear like some rubber. Oh. I think now it's okay again. I heard it okay. too. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. because sometimes my internet is so slow. Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, like I think uh, the, the ITTF and the Continental Federation, the National Association, there is many things that they can do to 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 help women to with this career transitioning. And first one of them is to to hire more women. Uh, I, I, like I know in ITTF, I see some women working, and but it's something new. Years ago, you would not see one woman anywhere. And it's the same in Spain, it's the same in Europe. Like when it comes to hiring, uh, if there is a choice uh, between 10 men and one woman, I understand that often the, the man takes, takes the job. But if we don't do anything to, to, to put these uh, women and to, to help them to, to get these jobs, they will also not inspire the other women to, to believe that they can achieve this. One example that I always say to, to many friends is that until I wasn't 20 years old, I didn't know that a woman can be a president in the country. Until I saw Angela Merkel being president of Germany, I didn't know that that was a possible thing. Like Because in Spain, every president that I saw were men, and I was not so interested in politics, so... I just knew, uh, I don't know, Clinton or a few more, and they were all men. So when I realized, like, wow, women can do that. It's possible. For me, it was mind-blowing. So, uh, like, for me, this is a very good example that if, like, we just get used to to be invisible and to be in the side. And I think federations, you can do much more, guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Galia. Thanks. Uh, I would like to address um, my next question to Hajira. Oh. Uh, and um, it's, it's specific a leadership one. Uh, as you made a history as the first woman to be elected and the executive in the South African Sports Confederation Olympic Committee as a vice president. Uh, what is crucial to be implemented or changed to have more women in the leadership positions? Okay. Uh, thank you, Katazina. I can just talk from, from where I am and where I was. Confidence, determination, to carve a place for you. You must know that you want to be there. Um, but Having said that, I think we are also, as women, generally averse to taking risks. We are afraid to take risks. And taking a risk is a key element to become a leader. You have to take that. It's a calculated risk because you will get, there will be times when you are not listened to, where you would be ignored, but you need to take that risk. And one of the most important aspects is to, keep, to keep in mind is that while you're embarking on this journey to leadership, don't forget where you've come from and who you are. Uh, that's very, very important. So, yes, uh, Katazina, to your question, you need to be confident and you must be determined. Uh, that, and that's what uh, Galia said. She didn't think there could be a chancellor that's a woman in Germany. But we've got now in the world many presidents of countries, and that comes with determination. And obviously, we need to rally support from our male counterparts as well. They're not always our enemies. Just remember that. We need to bring them into the fold of understanding where we as women come from. So, yeah, uh, confidence, determination, and carve a place for you in that position. You must know what you want and how you're going to get it. Okay, I hope that answers, Katazina. Thank you, thank you for your answer. Um, and uh, the conversation is really interesting and inspiring. I'm sure for all of us and all of our audience. Uh, and uh, it's, it's time to move to the question and answer part. 
Uh, we already received uh, some questions in the pre-registration -regist forms. Thank you very much uh, for, for sending it. Um, and uh, Dora would like to address the first question um, to uh, Galia. Okay. <laughs> Um, Galia, we have a question that's actually a combined question between uh, from, from two attendees today, um, from Maisa from Lebanon and Maria Joao Noguero. Um, do you think the portrayal of women or female athletes in uh, the media is, first of all, different from how they are portrayed, how male athletes are portrayed? And secondly, do you think that... Uh, there is more coverage of male matches, for example, because the population is, the audience is more interested in um, male sport, or is it that the audience is more interested because they are, it's more available. There is more portrayal of male matches, for example, on TV or at, at better times of the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Galia, we can't hear you. You are yeah. muted. <laughs> she muted, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, for the first part of the question, I think that if we realize where we are coming from and where we are now, it's, yeah. it's a big change and a big step forward because I, I don't want to say how many years ago, but when I was starting to play international and I was starting to play table tennis in a certain level, Still, the way women were portrayed in media, sports women portrayed in media, it was terrible. And in countries like mine in Spain, it's still not the same as men. They, they talk a lot about how women look, how women, I don't know, all these things that they are yeah. supposed to be uh, female things. But uh, it's getting much better. And at least what I see in the official channels from IDPF, from EPTU, in the official social media, sometimes there is a small clip and then me and some friends who are very fast writing to, to the people in charge that this is not okay. But at least in the official ch uh, channels, I think it, it's getting much, much better. Uh, of course, in some other uh, sports media like newspapers, magazines, and TV, sometimes we see things that are definitely not right. But if we remember where we are coming from, I, I, I would feel quite okay because the, the tendency is, is towards equality. And about the second part of the question, uh, well, uh, I think... Uh, most of the, the as, as we were talking, most of the table tennis players are men, and most of the people who is involved in table tennis is men. And I, I believe that it's only natural that those men are interested in men's sports. But uh, at the same time, it's true that if what we see all the time it's men's matches, of course, it's what they are interested in. In Spain now we have a very interesting uh, thing going on, and it's uh, with women's soccer, uh, football, uh, that uh, now start, they started to show a lot of matches on TV and speak about it. And at the beginning there was many men who were raging, like, why? And no, what, what is this equality from? Nobody cares. And But the stats and the numbers show that uh, people is watching those matches and people is interested in that. So um, I think it's um, it's a slow tendency, and it's a thing that it's a change that cannot happen from one day to another. And I think everybody must contribute, and uh, ITTF and the media should uh, promote these women matches. But of course, if we get more players and more women interested in sport, they will watch this also these women matches because me myself. I, I realized that uh, the standard used to be men. And then we talk, if we, they ask you who's your favorite player, everybody would ask, would answer a man. So I changed that and I always use women as example or try to do that. And I try to only watch women's matches, not because I don't care about <laughs> men's matches, but I try to compensate a little bit this balance. So I think, <laughs> as I was saying, maybe in the future we will see uh, a, a smaller gap. Thank you very much. 
Um, okay, uh, we have the next question uh, from Ikra Rehman to Eva. Um, we are working with girls and empower them through table tennis. So I want to know how to keep girls motivated when they lose matches and people bring them down by saying that they are not willing to work hard enough. Can you suggest some methods to support our girl psychologically? First, I have to say, excuse me, but this is rubbish. The girls work much harder, much harder than the boys. I, I all, so I, for this I give my right hand. The girls are in, in practice, they are willing to go much longer, much harder ways than the boys. The boys, you always need something to motivate them, the girls, they work. So this is the first. The second, this is my experience again, uh, yes, it is always, it was, no, there are much more people meddling in the work with girls than with the boys. Only when I had the, the, the girls team, it was always somebody from somewhere coming, trying to do good, trying to talk to them, trying to, to put them down, to put them up, to it was much more than with the boys. I don't know why this is, but it is for sure fact because it was not in one generation, it was in all generation of girls I was uh, allowed to work with. How to, to make this, how to, to, to avoid this, you cannot avoid. You also cannot talk against the people who are putting them down. I think the first thing it is very important to bring, to, to teach every athlete, and especially the girls, just to make them more self-confident, because they are much more, um, what is the, the English word? They, they are more critical, critical to themselves, yeah? So you have to make them strong, so you have to talk to them. You have to talk to them and you have to teach them to see realistically where they are and to evaluate their, their performance. So when they learn this, then they know I, I did everything. I, I was fighting. I did really uh, work hard. And then she will, they, they will know, okay, People are talking, you cannot avoid this, you cannot, uh, this will always happen, yeah? Just, they have to learn to ignore it, but with the girls, always, it is very important to talk more than with the boys, and if you talk the girl, to the girls, it is better to talk individually. With the boys, you talk to the group, you make a group, you, somehow, I don't know why this is. But it is like this. To the girls talk individually, teach her how to evaluate herself, uh, and then make her strong, self-confident, and then they will overcome this problem. But this problem is there, yes, I know, I know. I hope it helps a little. But I would just like to say one, two things. One to Hajira, everything you said, is 100% right at the end, but there is one thing more. I think that a woman to, to achieve something has to be ready to work as, twice as hard as a man for the same position. This is my experience. And to Galia, uh, we are more and more. When I started, I was the only one. So. We are more and more, this is going in the right direction. It is really going into the right, right direction. And there are many men who are sincerely ready to accompany us and to help us. Yeah, There's more and more also of, of this. Can I just respond? If I agree with you 100%, it is more difficult. But we need to hang in there. Yes. So that was. 
Okay, then I have a question for Elaine. And I was wondering, um, have your leadership skills been seen more as a strength or more of a weakness? Like in reaction, when other people reacted to you being a leader, how did they react? More like you're being really strong or you're being, you know. Um, I think I would divide into two stages. When I was uh, younger, um, when I officiate in the tournament or in the um, like leadership, like club president, things like that, I had lesser self-confidence at a younger age. Mm -hmm. But I think along the way with the um, um, development, um, when I involved in more tournaments, and actually it does help me in the leadership, and I tend to speak to them, and then I dare to give my own opinion, and I share with them how I think about the, the situations, and I would think that now it become a strength for me, and also I try to improve, and one thing is that I feel like I'm an Asian, so traveling to different parts of the world, and like exposing to um, Europeans and Americans, and it actually different culture, so it influenced me. Um, I used to be like Asian ladies, but now I have more um, influence like in European. So I dare to speak like, you know, like equal, gender equality, whereas like, you know, uh, formerly like in Asian, I'm like more Chinese, like female, and you have to uh, follow the mirror, the, the, the other part. But now I, I feel like in the future, like if I have um, in the leadership, I dare to speak and I dare to give my own opinion. Yeah, I would think it now is like become a strength for me. So, so by, by being a leader, you've become an even better leader. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I, Katarzyna, may I ask a question to Elaine mm -hmm. when she was talking about, um, you know, when both parents or partners are involved in table tennis and there's a family who takes care of the children. Do you, do you think a childcare facility at championships or some way would assist so you can bring your children? I'm asking that question because it could be an opportunity for a woman to make business there as well and the host can make. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that is a very, very good point. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, like me, I started table tennis when I was seven years old. And now if you can see many um, young children, I have friends, uh, coaches, uh, the kids started table tennis like about two years old. So I think the kids develop the interest towards the sports. So having a childcare facilities uh, while the parents is um, on duty as umpire or players or coaches at the venue, that would be something good to, that we can discuss and it could be something that we can have in the future. And in that case, we can encourage more female um, players, um, coaches and also the match officers to be in the um, venue. And also I think we can have more time spent together with our family and develop more like table tennis families. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katsuzina and daughter. Thank you very much. Uh, we are actually running out of time. Uh, but we had actually many questions uh, addressed. That's, that's why thank you very much uh, first to our uh, panelists uh, for the fantastic time which you share with us and um, for experience, uh, for the words of inspiration, motivation. Um, I, I guess uh, I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to impact uh, uh, greatly uh, the experience of future uh, athletes, uh, coaches, match officials and leaders. Uh, I would like to also um, thank you to the, to say thank you to the panelists um, and for, to, to the attendees who um, uh, took actively part uh, in our webinar. Hope you enjoy. Uh, and I would like to pass to Dora. Okay, uh, thank you very much to everyone, to all our panelists. 
Um, we do have a next webinar as well, next Tuesday, uh, 26 May, uh, at 3 o'clock Central uh, European Summer Time. Um, we have a special guest. Uh, it's going to be Timo Bo. Um, but for now, thank you so much to all our panelists. This was a great discussion, and I think we could have gone for three more hours. <laughs> but at some point, we, we have to probably let you go. <laughs> I don't know. Can we keep you? I don't know. Um, <laughs> But now I'd like to uh, pass on um, to Polona Chehovin, our director of our department, um, who would like to also share some words with you. Thank you. Where is she? I'm here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I normally do not, uh, it's not my habit to have this kind of intervention. And it's also not because I'm a woman and today we are talking about gender <laughs> balance. It's because I have an important message um, to conclude with um, the words of our CEO who is following the webinar. And of course, he was informed about it as well. There was also one comment from Christy where uh, the men from ITTF um, and please uh, rest assured that our male colleagues are working for the same cause uh, equally hard as we do. So let me uh, read what uh, Steve has to say to us. Uh, I'm very keen, and I'm adding, we all are, in growing the women game, in, and this is why in World Table Tennis, we will have a women's tour with equal prize money, uh, I mean, continuing with equal prize money, and also engage Deloitte, uh, a worldwide known uh, consulting firm, to help us run the product. More info is coming. It's being uh, revealed uh, week by week. There is also a WTT webinar next week that you may join if you are more interested uh, about details. So more info will come and ITTF is working hard to think how to make the women's game more popular, engage famous female former players and also female commercial experts. I think it's a, a nice conclusion when, um, and thanks again also from my end to all the panelists and to Cassia and Dora, you did a, a great job in preparing this webinar and many good questions. I think as women are so good, we could stay here for one more hour at least, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, not solve all the problems, but we addressed some very important uh, issues, let's say today. It's important for us also to know how you feel, what you need, what you miss, so that we can address them even better through our programs, incentives, initiatives, opportunities, and we will keep doing hard uh, uh, for this cause. So thank you. Thank you, Pelona. Thank you.